Hi, welcome to Essential IT and Security Skills. I'm Charles Redmond, Master Trainer, here to guide you through the essentials that you are gonna need to land the job that you are looking for. In this series, we're gonna talk about essential PC skills. I'm gonna walk you through everything from software to hardware. Most people know me as a cybersecurity expert. Well, I couldn't have gotten there without learning the basics first. That's what this series is gonna do. And then we'll move on in some later series with some more advanced concepts and techniques. But remember, it all starts with the basics. It starts right here, the essential PC skills. I'll explain the partitions available in Windows, discuss hard drive formatting options, how to partition and format hard drives, and how to maintain and troubleshoot your hard drives. So partitioning is the process of electronically subdividing the physical hard drives. Windows assigns them names such as C or D. Partitioning enables you to recognize the drive according to your personal taste. One physical drive can have one or more partitions. So there are three basic kinds of partitions, either basic disks, this uses a master boot record. Dynamic disks, which are proprietary to Microsoft. Or a GPT, or a GUID partition table. This is a newer scheme that replaces the old master boot record. The first sector of a hard drive contains the master boot record. The master boot record is a small amount of data that contains the partition table. Instructions in the master boot record use the table to determine which partition contains the active operating system. Here you see the three basic parts, the sector itself, the master boot record code, and then the partition table. After the master boot record locates the approach after the master boot record locates the appropriate partition, the partition boot sector loads the operating system on that partition. The master boot record partition tables support two types of partitions, either primary partitions or extended partitions. An important note here is the extended partition is not bootable. Here's a look at active partitioning in Windows. You see the common C, which is where the Windows operating system is held, and then other partitions, D, E, and F, where alternate data can be stored. However, you see only one partition is identified as active. The master boot record finds the active partition and boots the operating system on that partition. Remember, only one partition can be active at a time, mainly because you can only run one operating system at a time. However, it is possible to have a PC that boots into multiple operating systems and for that, you'll need special boot manager software like Grub, which is popular in Linux. Here's a look at what a grub. Here's a look at what a grub bootloader looks like. You see, I can have Ubuntu and Windows 7 on the same machine. Next, let's talk about dynamic disks. Dynamic disks appeared after Windows 2000. Instead of partitions, we refer to them as volumes. However, remember the RAID levels that you choose are dependent on the Windows operating system that you're running.
Here's a look at the different types of volumes that are available depending on the Windows operating system that you're running. All the way from Simple Spanned and Striped from Windows XP Professional, all the way to Simple Spanned, Striped, Mirrored, and RAID 5 with Windows Server 2000 R2. The GPT, or the GUID Partition Table, follows some of the same principles as the master boot record, but many of the limitations have been overcome. For instance, with the master boot record drives, you're limited to only four partitions. A GPT drive can have an almost unlimited number of partitions. However, Microsoft has limited Windows to 128 partitions. Still not bad. So the GPT is arranged by the LBA instead of sectors. LBA0 is identified as the protective MBR. And you're not limited to just this. You can have hidden partitions. A lot of computer manufacturers will use hidden partitions for a recovery sector, for instance, or a swap partition. Generally, you're only going to find this on Linux or BSD systems, similar to a page file in Windows. So when should you partition your drive? You'll have several options to choose from. You can partition it when installing a new operating system, when adding a new hard drive, and on later versions of Windows, you can actually resize existing partitions using the available free space on the hard drive. Here's a look at the different disk utilities that you can use to accomplish this. For instance, on the left, you see FDisk. That's usually used by Linux. And on the right is a Windows 7 disk management tool. You'll find that in the Computer Management MMC. So drive structures on an MBR or GPT disk are called partitions, regardless of which operating system is used. And remember, dynamic disks, which are proprietary to Microsoft, uses volumes and not partitions. In Windows Vista and 7, they're called partitions during installation, but volumes after disk management. Next, let's take a look at how to format your hard drive. Formatting configures a partition to hold files or folders suitable to whatever operating system you're installing. The two major functions of formatting is to create a file system and to create a root directory. The Windows operating system supports four different file system types. The original being FAT, you'll see that referred to as FAT16, FAT32, FAT64, and NTFS. FAT, or the file allocation table, keeps track of the sectors that store various parts of a file. It was referred to as FAT16 because it was configured to operate 16 bits at a time. Some of the key limitations of FAT are 16 bits can address only 64 kilobytes in sectors. So sector sizes were limited to 512 bytes. To overcome this, we use clustering. That enables the partition sizes to go up to at least two gigs. So what's clustering? Clustering combines a set of contiguous sectors and treats them as a single unit. This unit is called a cluster or file allocation unit. The size of the cluster increases with the size of the partition. So basically, Windows looks for the first cluster marked 0000 or good and available. And if the file fits in the cluster, FFFF is put in the status column. If the file is larger than the cluster, Windows finds the next open cluster.
However, all this moving around can cause what we call fragmentation. Fragmentation occurs when files are spread across clusters in a non-contiguous manner. Fragmentation will cause the system to operate very slow and sluggish because the read-write heads are having to jump all around looking for the proper data. So programs such as the disk defragmenter are used to, you guessed it, defragment the files and folders, or both, to put them back in a continuous manner. Here's a look at the disk defragmenter. There you have it. It's pretty simple. Remember, everything starts with the basics. Once you have these understood, everything gets a whole lot easier. If you have any questions or even just a comment, feel free to leave them below and I do read each and every one of them. I'll see you next time.